It was a surprise to many of us when Daher unveiled a new version of its Kodiak single-engine utility turboprop. Already well-respected as an SUV of the sky, the Kodiak 100 has sold well since its introduction in 2007, with more than 300 delivered. Now the Kodiak 900 comes on the scene as the 100's bigger and more capable brother. The 900 sports some more high-end features along with a fuselage that is 3.9 feet longer and aerodynamic improvements that give it a big boost, up to 36 knots more speed at cruise. The Model 100 will continue in production, however, and will be the choice for those who want the option of floats for water landing capability. The 900 carries more payload and flies faster and even offers the option of a double club seating arrangement for eight passengers. I put the second 900 ever built through its paces during a flight with Mark Brown, Dyer Kodiak Chief Demo Pilot and Marketing Director. With 1,200 pounds of fuel in the wings, about half tanks, the 900 with just two of us on board was fairly light at close to 5,000 pounds takeoff weight. I taxied to Hillsboro, Oregon's runway 31 right, popping the power lever occasionally into beta range to manage the taxi speed, which tends to be faster because the wheels are smaller than the Kodiak 100s, and to avoid having to constantly ride the brakes. Great, zero, zero, Zulu. We'll fly straight out for now, runway 31 a right, clear for takeoff. With trim set and flaps 20, once lined up with the runway, I advanced the torque to the high green. The Kodiak accelerated quickly, and I made one more small adjustment to the torque before it was time to lift the nose at 60 knots and rotate. Climbing out to the west, I initially pitched for 85 knots, then once the flaps were up, 120 knots. The 900 climbed 1,700 to 1,800 feet per minute at our light weight. I then ascended to 8,000 feet and renewed my Kodiak acquaintance with a few turns, noticing immediately that Brown was right about the 100 and 900 feeling almost exactly the same. The 900's handling is responsive and stable. About the only difference I could tell between the two airplanes is a more powerful 900 has better climb capability. Anyone familiar with the Garmin G1000 avionics and the PT6 engine will be instantly comfortable in the Kodiak, and the 900 is no exception. With its heavier weight, the 900 is powered by a 900 shaft horsepower Pratt & Whitney Canada PT6A-140A, up from the 100's 750 shaft horsepower engine. Once level at 11,000 feet, the airspeed settled on 207 knots true airspeed at ISA plus 12 degrees centigrade, about three to four knots slower because of the optional weather radar and its pod on the right wing. Fuel flow was 423 pounds per hour. Dyer and Kodiak engineers worked together to refine the 900 and it's clear they spent a lot of time on aerodynamic smoothness. The cargo pod, which is removable on the 100 and must be removed to install floats, is fully integrated into the 900. New wheel pants help add more speed and the result is a top speed of 210 knots at 12,000 feet without the radar pod. Both the Kodiak 100 and 900 still share many structural features and the fuel tanks carry virtually the same load, about 320 gallons. With that fuel, the 900 can fly 1,129 nautical miles in 6.8 hours at 156 knots true airspeed, but bump that up to the 210 knot maximum cruise speed and range drops to 969 nautical miles, but that's in only 4.3 hours. Clearly, flexibility is the name of the game with the 900. Dropping power back to 400 horsepower, Brown demonstrated fuel burn down to the 200s in pounds per hour. For special missions work flying at 93 to 97 knots and with 10 degrees of flaps, with full fuel we could stay up for 8 to 9 hours. 
We stayed in the low speed regime and Brown showed how easy it is to fly at 80 knots with 20 degrees of flaps. The 900's wing features the same discontinuous leading edge as the 100, which prevents the ailerons from stalling at slow speeds. If you do 30 to 45 degree bank turns, this is what we also call terrain flying. So if anybody gets themselves into a pickle or you're going to inspect a new strip or whatever, this is what we recommend people get themselves into is 20 degrees of flaps, 80 knots. At a 40 degree turn, your turning radius is like a quarter of a mile. Wow. So you can turn around really tight in some really tight canyon type scenarios. You can see you're basically pivoting over a point. We slowed the 900 further with airspeed in the 60s and it remained rock solid. Normal landing speeds in the 70s in this airplane. But if I was coming in real short, needed to be as slow as possible. So I like to show that just to show that, you know, even at a landing speed of, say, 70 knots, recommended, we've got tons of margin still. And it's not going to be it doesn't feel like it's going to fall out of the sky. It's still got good control feel. Brown demonstrated a clean stall, which was uneventful and then set power for zero thrust to show how even such a large airplane can glide and give the pilot plenty of time to troubleshoot and find a place to land. Reducing airspeed again, he demonstrated turning with the stall horn beeping and the control wheel all the way back. The stick is all the way in my gut. You can see I still have full aileron control and a full stall. I'm out of the stall. We will be number two for three one left, one six seven eight Charlie. That outboard wing never stops flying. The outboard aileron, or the, the aileron which is attached to the outboard wing, never loses control authority. Yeah. So the two things you need for a spin is a full wing stall and complete loss of aileron control. You can't get either of those in the Kodiak 900, just like in the Kodiak 100. So again, safety-wise, you're, you know, you get all the benefits of the speed and everything else, but you don't lose any of that real magic of the, of the wing from the Kodiak. Before returning to Hillsboro, I flew two steep turns, a good way to get familiar with the handling of a new airplane. The Kodiak 900 felt like it was on rails. Approaching Hillsboro from the north, the tower set us up for a right downwind to 3 1 right. November 9 0 0 0 0 Hillsboro Tower, a firm uh, altitude is your discretion. Wind calm, runway 3 1 right, clear to land. 3 1 right, clear to land. Uh, zero, 0 0 0. On final approach, with full flaps selected, I switched off the yaw damper and aimed for the runway. Speed was perfect, but as the 900 settled over the runway, I could feel it getting heavy and realized I should have added some more aft trim. The Kodiak dropped firmly onto the runway and I pulled the power lever into beta to slow down, then taxied back to Hillsboro Aviation. The 900 is priced at 3.487 million and it seems to have opened a new niche that wasn't being filled for a capable load hauling but relatively fast airplane that can land on grass, dirt, and gravel runways. Surprisingly, when Daher opened the order book for the 900, it found that most new buyers are new to the Kodiak, not move up Kodiak 100 owners. That means that these new buyers are looking for a little bit of luxury, lots of speed, a load handling capability, and the capability of flying into unimproved airstrips, unlike the Kodiak 100 buyers who are pure utility users. While the aircraft is already FAA certified, first deliveries were planned for early 2023.